Hello, everybody. Welcome to Nerd Blazes, a new segment. What the hell is happening? Where Jeff and I pick a show that's airing right now, an anime that's airing right now in the season that we know nothing about, watch the latest episode, and answer that age old question what the hell is happening? Uh, I'm Jacoby. I'm joined by Jeff. Yo, it's a me. I usually do the intros, but Kobe's doing it now. That is that is true. It's a, it's a weird shift in power dynamics. Um, the power anime. Play. Power play. This is this is my t- this is my takeover of Nerd Blaze. <laughs> I want fifty one percent of the company. Uh, yeah. Oh. The the anime that we chose is uh, Hina Matsuri. Um, heard it was pretty popular. Didn't know what it was about, so we picked the latest episode, episode ten, which is called Like a River Stream, and decided to check it out. So Jeff, let's mm-hmm. dive right into the age old question: What the hell is happening in Hina Matsuri? What did you think when you watched this episode? Uh, so, well, as you said, we kind of watched this anime with no context whatsoever, and, uh, walking away from it, I got some, uh, it's some very slice-of-life vibes. Uh, it didn't seem like this episode was connected to any overarching plotline. It seemed kind of like, this is just like a, a, like, watching it independently of the rest of the series, I still kind of felt like I knew what was up in a broad sense. Um, so in the, in the first half of the episode, it, it, I guess we follow, uh, Hinato? Uh, Hitomi. Yeah, Hitomi. Hitomi? Hitomi? Yeah, so, all right, Hitomi. And, uh, it starts off with her, I guess, uh, coming home late, and her mom is, like, pissed off at her. Yeah, and she's, then... she's sneaking off somewhere, like, I'm like, oh, what's she doing? And then her mom thinks she's being depraved, like, oh, what's her secret passion? Is she off doing something, something crazy, something wild? Yeah, her, her mom goes from like uh what like she, she i don't know what her first suspicions are but it eventually uh lands on the my daughter is potentially a hooker assumption yeah she's suspicion. sneaking out she's sneaking out a lot and doing night things and then so i <laughs> must thought be a hooker. must be a hooker it's the only explanation i thought we were going to get a cool i don't know some explanation for that but the but the, the answer is she's a bartender she's a bartender <laughs> at a bar and i was like oh Okay, not what I was expecting, but rolling with it, rolling with it. So this is about a girl who works at a bar at night, and what's up with this bar? Is is weird stuff going to happen at this bar? Yeah, and uh, I I saw that, and I was like, oh, okay, so she must be, like, a young adult or something like that, living with her mom, you know, sporting herself, maybe sporting her, her, her mom. Uh, but it turns out she's in middle school. She's a middle schooler working at a bar, and uh is that legal is that a thing no Can that, you do that, that? Be, I, I don't know i don't know the rules in japan but she's like middle school so she's like 14 and she's a bartender and i don't no i don't think that's legal <laughs> she's she's serving up daiquiris and stuff like that so yeah like uh anyway so she, yeah she's at this bar and um she's complaining to her her bar co-workers i guess there's a blonde guy and um some other some other chick who seem and like they're married or together because they're like, oh, how could I love someone like you? Yeah, they're 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 adult. They're together and they're adults. And uh, uh, Hitomi is basically complaining about her mom, and the older lady instantly says, ah, you should just leave. Yeah, just leave your your family. And then the guy's like, I don't know if that's good advice. That's kind of what I was thinking too. Yeah, it's no, like, it's horrible advice. I'm like, okay, well, don't listen to this lady at all. She's a devil in disguise. Yeah, and then after that, um, the the show or at least her life seems to move at a breakneck speed because the, it goes from that scene to her basically purchasing or renting a house for like 150,000 yen. Uh, and then hey, she but that's without, a that's without the, uh, that's without the key deposit and, um, and everything else. So, I mean, like that's a pretty good price. Yeah. It's a good price. I assume I, I don't know yen to dollars, but that's let's just say it's fine anyway. So she has her own place and she's in the middle school and she starts working a whole bunch of other jobs because she's such a great bartender. You know, she has all these connections uh, with her clients and stuff. Because that's what I, I do. Suppose. Don't you do that at a bar when you're sitting at a bar and you're taking a drink and the bartender serves you a good deck? You're like, hey, you know what? You could do this other job for me. And then I hire her on the spot. Yeah, it's, it's the new uh, it's the new LinkedIn. Yeah, new Going LinkedIn. to a bar and just hiring. Ba- Barden, linked Bard. Yeah. Bard linked. We'll work on the name later. Barden. Okay, take it dibs so yeah there he she's she's a a real hard working gal and uh but when she starts getting into sort of the 
the day-to-day doldrums of working so many jobs and eventually she comes up with a master plan which she wherein she has a housewarming party and she invites her mom and she's hoping that by having all of her her bosses and her coworkers in the same place her mom will tell them all oh she's in middle school she's not supposed to be working and that'll uh, relieve her of all her jobs you know which is I guess better than just quitting the jobs and moving back in with her mom because she can't say no. So yeah, so she she invites all these people and then her mom shows up and all these business people are there and they're all these men and she's like, oh god, my daughter's a prostitute. <laughs> but but the the complete opposite happens. Everyone rushes up to her, like, hey, your your daughter's a, is a great worker and like in the and Hitomi's like, hey hey hey, this will be the time. My mom will say she's in middle school and all my and all my work will stop. And the mom's like, yep, please take care of my daughter. And then she's like foiled again because every mom wants her middle school daughter to succeed later in life. So she's just like, why doesn't Hitomi just start earlier? And, and thus, that's, thus ruins her plan. Thus w- ruins her plan. So at this point, I was like, okay, this is a pretty good slice of life anime. I kind of like Hitomi and she, she's struggling. I, I, I assume this was an anime about a young girl pretending to be a much older girl. And like, and, and like that, was, that was the whole basis for everything. And then the story completely shifts to this other blonde girl who just seems much younger and is and just got money from her parents. I'm like, oh, who's this? Is this someone that hit homie switch places with? Is this somebody? Is this and then they switch lives? Is this something like that? And then she gets money for it. And it's like, okay, this is cool. And then she lifts the fucking floor up <laughs> with magic. I'm like, what? I I rewound that part like two or three times because I'm like, hold on. Did I just see that? Did I just see some fucking magic in this slice of life anime? Yep. So I was wrong in my assumption. So this is so this is a magic anime. That's uh, we could we could say that for for a fact. And some for some reason they're friends. But then what follows is a nice like PSA episode about the dangers of having the power to to to, to prosper yourself comes at the cost of hurting others, and it's just a nice message throughout because this girl who I believe is Anzu. Uh, wants to spend the low money she has to get gifts for her parents and it's just a nice story and she also does magic yeah so the the 5000 so she gets 5000 yen which i that's the number i actually did punch into the google uh currency uh what's how much word? is that it's so 5000 yen is basically 45 bucks that's still a lot yeah for i guess for like a middle school yeah but yeah. there's a funny scene where she shows it to uh, to hitomi and then Hitomi's like, "What's uh, what's her, what's because what? it's like a surprise." She's like, "Surprise!" And she's like, "What do you? What's what's the surprise here?" And she's like, "Oh, I've, I've got that I've forty-five got, bucks." That was so cute. That broke my heart. It's like that <laughs> yeah. I've got five thousand yen. She's like, uh-huh. "Oh, yeah!" <laughs> I didn't know how to react to that. Uh huh. So she's trying to find the gift for her parents, and then this fucker, uh, Sanbu, I think, or Sanbu, Sanban. Sabu. Yeah, so he's like, yeah, I know the perfect idea. And he brings these two kids to a fucking horse gambling ring. Which doesn't seem legal, but she's working at a bar, so she's basically an adult. Yeah, I don't know what is what are the laws in Japan that they just let kids gamble and also work at various jobs? I mean, I guess they're sort of like low-end jobs. I mean, bartender doesn't seem... I mean, no, maybe, <laughs> that, that's a, that's an adult's job. That's sure. an adult's job. That's I thought that was the crux of this whole anime that a young girl <clears throat> masquerading as an adult. But nope, mm. this is a, this is a magic girl anime, right? Um, and what follows is a gambling segment wherein she wins it all and then loses it all within the span of a few races, and she uh, briefly um, considers using her magic powers to make the rider fall off the first horse by breaking horse, the horse's leg. Horse sashimi. Yeah, yeah but she had the that visual in her head. Horse sashimi overrode her desire to help her parents, and that's when and she learned the the true lesson of it. That maybe the best gifts aren't they don't cost a lot of money. It's it's the appreciation behind it, which would have been a really good lesson to learn before the horse gambling ring, because then she would have had five thousand yen and cheap gifts. Yeah, man, sucker! This magical <laughs> girl doesn't know anything. Which I think I don't know. She's obviously new to this world. So she must be like a maybe not even a magical girl, just someone from a different time. Yeah, because uh, uh, throughout the uh, this the episode, Hitomi seems to be teaching her about certain things. About uh, didn't she teach her the concept of a gift? Or yeah, what, what yeah she, she taught her the concept of a gift. Like, what is a gift? And then she's like, a gift is something you give to someone. 
for someone else. You're doing something for someone. It's like, okay, this is nice and this is sweet. Um, oh, right, yeah. And then she, she takes her to, like, the bowling alley, the karaoke. Oh, that was a very funny scene. Um, it's like, let's spend it on bowling. It's like, w- can't I just set up sticks in the park and knock them over? It's like, good point. It's like, let's do karaoke. Uh, can't I just sing in the bathtub? Let's <laughs> drink at a coffee bar. Can't I just drink water in the park? And she's like, okay, don't spend your money anywhere. Mm-hmm. So this was fun. This was a very funny... This is a kind of a lighthearted anime, I and mean, when I when I described it to you, I, I think I described it. All I knew was that it was that it was like an action comedy type thing. But I was like, oh, I guess I was wrong. And then I read the description of this afterwards. And Jeff, tell me how much this falls in line with this episode. The story follows Yakuza member uh, Needy, who ends up taking care of a mysterious girl with telekinetic powers named Hina, who inexplicably appeared in his apartment. Okay, so. Uh, Yakuza member? Don't know who that is. It must that... be the blonde dude, the big, the, the the dude who was at the bar. That's who I'm guessing it was. Yeah, I guess so. And so yeah, this is definitely just a side episode then, because it doesn't even really follow. It's around, not even. Around, it's not even Hina. His... <laughs> yeah, the two main characters of this, and which I'm looking at the cover of the the manga. It, it's it's the dude holding a gun, and a sword, and and this black haired girl eating something from a bowl and it's like these are this is not the anime that i just watched <laughs> yeah so, this is a side venture yeah so what the hell is happening at hinamatsuri we don't know something about uh yakuza bosses and also um the the lax labor laws in japan yeah yeah about how there's a bunch of odd jobs oh i liked her being in the bear suit when she was in the bear suit and she was like doing that job she got the crap beat out of her by her yeah idols in the band. Yeah, she, she was fans of this random band and i thought that was gonna go somewhere but no she just got kicked in the stomach i'll rate the show i'll give it a rating the final rating the only rating i give the show a two out of five i give this uh expectation versus reality i give 2.5 out of five i would have liked it if i knew, thought this was a slice of life anime going in i was expecting a little more action did not get it um and i don't know what the hell is happening so i will leave it at that sounds good all right. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, see you next time when we pick another anime when we try to figure out what the hell is happening. I'm Jacoby. I'm Jeff. And we'll see you next time. Peace out.